What's up guys? It's Missy. I'm back with another SimCity Builder video. Today we're going to be talking about contest mayor's terminology. Now, you guys, a lot of people have asked me in the past, you know, what does this mean? What does that mean? It's kind of scattered all about the guide when you need to utilize it, but we're going to talk about all of them all at once so that you guys know what the heck I'm talking about. I'm sure when you watch some of the walkthroughs or whatever, you're probably thinking, what does that mean? What does this mean? This video is being done upon request. It was a really good idea for a video, something I hadn't really honestly thought of. So again, you guys, I, I'm not in uh, your head. I don't know what parts, you know, with this that you guys are having trouble with. So anytime that you can give me feedback in the comments section or private message me, it would be much appreciated. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. You can join us on Facebook at SimCity Build It, Missy Ann YT. We do have a page and a group. They're two separate things. Hit like on the page and join on the group. Okay, let's just get right into this. Contest and Mayor's terminology, the very first one, and a lot of people actually don't know this, is COM, C-O-M. That is what we mean, contest and mayors, okay? All right, now, when you guys do your task assessments, and a lot of you guys don't, but you really, really should, uh, you are gonna go down to the section of the, the guide here where it says task assessment, okay, and calm breakdown. Now, a lot of you guys hear me talk about this in the beginning of uh, every walkthrough. I go through and I tell you guys what it means. This is listed here. Um, we're just going to quickly get this over with because a lot of you guys probably know this portion. The rest of this stuff, though, is very, very informative, and I highly recommend that you guys stick around for all of it so that you fully understand and can actually start winning the contest of mayors every week. So the first one is main. A main task is an assignment that is already in your list worth 2,000 points or more. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's premium or non-premium. It just has to be in the list for 2,000 points or more. Okay? A rotatable assignment is an assignment that is in your list worth below 2,000 points. No touch cancels are assignments that you either will not be doing at all for the duration of the contest or you're canceling. Okay? Last resort rotatable are coins at any value and the repair and keys at the value of 1,200. Those Three assignments are usually only uh, labeled that for low-level players because high-level players usually don't do them at that value, okay? It just means that you would do this right around uh, 30 tasks remaining, which would be right before the streaks. Then we have Epic um, that can be labeled Last Resort Retatable, but you wouldn't do it before the streaks. Okay. Uh, oh, High Premium. High premium is an assignment that can be worth over 3,000 points. Premium is an assignment that can be worth up to 3,000 points. Non-premium is an assignment that cannot be worth 3,000 points. Okay, so that pretty much takes care of that. Oh, limited. You have limited assignments, which are assignments that can only be done until whatever the resources are run out, like war cards, you would run out of war cards, or homes for epics, things like that. Limited time is an assignment that can only be done during a certain time frame, like uh, war assignments or monster, things like that. Okay, so let's get up to the top portion of this document, and I'm going to be typing in definitions to all of these, but I wanted to get the video recorded for you guys, so it won't look like this when you guys uh, click on the document link later on today. It'll have everything typed out for you, but we're going to go through it uh, vocally so that you guys better understand. Okay, so every time that you guys choose an assignment, you are choosing it based on an entire list of criteria. And that is why you cannot simplify any one uh, choice. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, well, last week I had this and you said to do that. Well, last week you had a whole list of criteria that wasn't the same as this week. And that list of criteria is what you're going to be uh, looking at, okay? The very first thing is value. Value is the points of the assignment in your list. So if it's 2,000 points, that would be the value, okay? Value opportunity is the opportunity that you gain by doing that assignment because of its value. For example, 
you can only have a certain number of, let's say, 3K tasks or 2K tasks. It used to be a lot lower than it is now. I've actually seen as high as six 3K assignments in one list, but that's rare. So every time that you do an assignment worth a decent value, you open up the possibilities of getting more assignments of higher value because you have less assignments in the list at high value, right? So value opportunity is the opportunity that you gain by completing that value assignment, the valued assignment. So you're gaining the opportunity to open up more 3K tasks because you've done a 3K task. If you look at your list, you more than likely have at the start of your week two 3K tasks, uh, a couple of you know 1,500 to 1,600 point tasks. Then you have a couple of 1,000 point tasks and, a, and maybe one or two 800 point tasks. So it's a variety, right? So like I said, you're not going to open your, up your week and see all 3K tasks. So it's the possibility that you're gaining or the opportunity that you're gaining by doing that value. Now you have value difference. That is the difference in value between whatever assignment you're comparing your choices to. So if you have, you know, a 3K for delivery and you are comparing it to a 3K VU, then the value difference is nothing. If it's a 2,000 point versus a 3,000 point, then the value difference would be 1,000. So you're always going to look at value difference when making your selection. If the value difference uh, is pretty significant, then you're definitely going, well, you always look at everything, but you're going to want to make sure that the opportunity and every and the uh, reward outweighs the risk before you take a huge hit on your points. Okay, so for high level players, for example, the reason that you guys do your premiums, um, you do your, your premiums and non-premiums at main task value, but then when you get to your rotatable value, you guys do your, your highest premium. You don't do non-premiums, which would mean, or not at that point. So you could have a 1,700 Neo coins, but you're going to do a 1,000 point VU. Why is that? The value difference is significant, right? Well, it's because that the possibility, the opportunity is higher that it's going to kick back a 3k task and you're going to get your good doorways and you may never have to rotate in those non-premiums, right? So you're, you're kind of tricking the game into this kind of looped, do my main tasks, do my premiums, and then you, you go into this situation. That technique does not work with low-level players because they can't do upgrades. So always look at your, your value difference to make sure that you are making the right selection. And like I said, it's going to go into a whole list of criteria. The next one is value possibility. That is the value that that assignment can be worth. Now, we have a general uh, ballpark, okay, that we've labeled it, and that's premium, non-premium. But some assignments can only be worth a certain amount. For example, the value possibility on a uh, war delivery is 3,000, right? The value possibility on a uh, war card upgrade is 3,000. But the value possibility on a launch legendary is 3,600. That's what makes it a high premium. Now, when you're talking non-premium, you have a non-premium, let's say, hotspot. The value possibility is only 1,100. That's it. It can't be worth anything else. Uh, cargo can only be worth up to 1,800 points. So doing cargo is not necessarily... Um, the same thing as doing, let's say, or doing the regional hotspot is not the same thing as doing cargo. Cargo can come back worth more points, whereas hotspot cannot. Now, here's the difference, though. Hotspot has a lower algorithm, significantly lower, like you almost never get it back again, making the opportunity higher. And if we're going with opportunity trumps value, that would mean that you would go with the hotspot in that situation, right? Okay. So, like I said, looking at the whole list of criteria here, you guys are going to have to get into a habit of looking at your list as a whole, and then you're, you're basically what you're doing is you're looking at this list, you're organizing it into all these categories, 
and then you're picking out the ones that, you know, bring you the highest value and opportunity and, and all that stuff. And then you're, you're narrowing in on your list, getting it down to two or three assignments. And then you're taking all this, this whole list of criteria, and you're sitting there and you're going, okay, what am I doing? It is a game of odds. Okay, so people say, well, I did this and the outcome was good, therefore I made the right choice. No, just because you do something and the outcome is good does not mean it was the correct choice. For example, let's say that you have a electrical for 3,000 points just before the streaks. The electrical is prepped and you decide that you're going to go ahead and do it, but you only have two days, maybe a day left in the contest. You do the electrical and you get lucky and you don't get electrical again, you're able to finish the contest. Does that mean that you made the correct choice? Absolutely not. That was the stupidest thing that you could have done, okay? Just because this outcome was good does not make it the correct choice. The odds of you have it, having been able to get through the streaks was significantly lower than your odds of not being able to. So you went out on a huge limb there. Now let's say the next time rolls around, you have it, you know, pumped into your brain that, okay, that was the right choice last time. So, so you know, in your brain, that worked out good for me last time. So I think I'll try it again this time. And it doesn't work out. And it screws you over big time. And you end up failing the whole week because you can't do that assignment repeatedly in the amount of time that you had remaining. So going with a ba uh, chance, going on out on a limb and taking a chance when the odds are against you is not advised. So you're breaking your whole list down into what is going to bring you the best outcome and what has the highest chance of bringing you the best outcome. So a lot of times when we do things, we do things to avoid, a ri we, you know, we take a risk when the opportunity is good, but we don't take a risk when the odds are against us. Now the next thing is going to be, uh, what were we talking about? Opportunity, right? So opportunity is what you get from doing that particular assignment, not what you get, how do I explain this? When you do an assignment, you open up, let's say you're doing a three, 3K VU, you're opening up the possibility of a 3K VU to come in, or any VU for that matter, because as long as there is a VU assignment in your list, you will not get another one, right? Now, certain tasks have a higher possibility of giving more garbage assignments, right? So assignments with lower algorithms that are bad assignments have a higher chance of bringing in better assignments. So a non-premium assignment that is not good to you, let's say a hotspot for uh, 1100, that's not a good assignment, that's a garbage, right? But because of the fact that it has such a low algorithm, meaning the amount of times it's going to come back, it brings you better opportunity than something that is going to come back repeatedly for a, a crappy value. So let's say you have a 1,200 keys, for example, and a 1,100 hotspot. You're not going to do the keys even though it's more because the algorithm on the keys is significantly higher, right? But the value possibility is higher on keys. So it's got higher value, higher value possibility, why wouldn't we do it? Because of its algorithm. The algorithm, it's just going to keep coming back. And we don't want that. We want better assignments to come in. So we're going to sacrifice those 100 points to open up better opportunity for better assignments to come in. Okay? Now the game category. The game category is what you need to know to make the selection based on what's going on in your game. So if you have a 2K monster in your list and it's your main task, but the monster is days away and you have, let's say, four uh, 1K premiums at the bottom of your list, do you wait two days to do the monster? Do you pay hundreds of cash? No, you continue working under those stipulations. But what if all your doorways were different? 
you know, it, you, you got to look at everything. Certain scenarios, things might be different. The game category is basically what's going, whatever's going on in your game that, that makes a difference on your selection. So if your club's in war versus not in war, that's going to make a difference on how you're going to be able to do your assignments. Uh, items that are prepped. That is another good example of what would be going on in your game that could make your choice, that could influence your choice. So, for example, I had a situation with one of my low-level players just a little bit ago. She was uh, in a situation where her entire list basically had a bunch of garbage assignments. She had a 2100 sugar, which is two rounds for a low-level player, and a one round of feed. She had already prepped feed for one round. She has only three other doorways and two of her upgrades secured. Okay, but she's only like 10 assignments into the contest. Now, feed is prepped, but only at 1,300 points, right? So she would do the feed, even though it's at low value, because she has to do it within the first 20 to 25 assignments. Because of the amount of doorways that she uh, doesn't have, you know, she doesn't have any good doorways. She has to do the sugar anyway. She went with sugar, picked up all the feed, and left the feed to to sit in her list. That was a huge mistake. But if the feed had not been prepped, then it would be a whole different thing. We wouldn't prep feed first. We would prep sugar first because of its high value. So if you look at her list blindly and not looking at what's going on in her game, you would say sugar. But now that you know, hey, feed is already prepped, that kind of changes the way things are. Not always. Sometimes you pick up all your stuff and you wouldn't uh, do the feed at all. Let's say she had a lot of other good doorways. You know, her list was really, really good. She could afford to let the feed sit at that value. So she would just do the sugar. You got to look at your list as a whole. Okay, the next one is history. Now, this one is super, 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 super important, okay? And a lot of you guys don't pay attention to this at all. First off, this is why exactly why you guys need to take screenshots of your lists. Top and bottom, put them in a, a Google Photos album, put them in order, and that way you can go back and look. Now, the amount of times that you do an assignment is going to make all the difference. If you have an assignment that doesn't necessarily have a, a high algorithm and it keeps coming back, that pretty much means that you should probably stop doing it if it's not you know, something that's beneficial to you. For example, let's say that you've had cargo three times in a row. Do you really want to keep doing it? Or should you try to figure out something else, a different doorway, you know, because it's lowering your average. You have to look at the history of your assignments. Let's say that you're a high level player and you've had, I don't know, uh, three times you've had the sunny coins task and you're just before the streaks and you get it again. You've run out of sunny items, your regional HQ is closing, or even if it's not, it's costing you like 80 cash to bring in a truck. Do you really want to do it another time? Can you even afford to do it another time? So that would change the, the way that you would make your choice, right? Okay. So again, you guys always look at the history, the doorways. This is pretty simple. Okay. Kind of. And this is something that you guys need to uh, pay the most attention to. This is what you're going to benefit the most from when you take screenshots of your week. When you do an assignment, this the slot in which the assignment sits. So the top of this list is a delivery to Tokyo for 3000 That is doorway number one. Okay. Let's say I do Tokyo delivery and it gives me a garbage assignment. So I move down to the war delivery and it gives me a garbage assignment. Then I move down to the leaf simoleons. Okay, so now I'm on doorway number three. And this one has given me, over the course of seven assignments, it's given me five assignments worth 2,000 points or higher. This would be my good doorway, right? So I would be looking at this doorway and comparing the assignment that is on the doorway against the assignments that are on my other good doorways, if I have any. So if I have, let's say, a 1600 
Neo-Simoleons versus a 1600 Paris. Uh, I've already done Neo-Simoleons one time. Do I do the Paris or do I do the Neo-Simoleons? Well, if it's on my good doorway, I would probably want to do the, the Neo-Simoleons, even though I've only, you know, I've already done them one time, given that they're on my good doorway. Now, what you can do is you can shift doorways so that you guys put some of your high non-premiums on your, your garbage doorways, but you got to be careful doing that, okay? One of the things that you need to know about doorways is, and this is kind of hard to explain, but I'll do my best. Let's say, and usually this is more uh, important for high-level players, you rotate your three premiums up here at the top. Or, yeah, they're premiums. Your three main premiums up here at the top, okay? Then, because you're a high-level player, you come down here and you rotate these three assignments down here first before you even think of touching any of these garbage assignments. Total opposite technique of a low-level player. But point being is doorway number one usually leads back around and you get these looped slash repeat assignments, okay? Now, looped and repeat assignments are usually done because you're working the same doorway. So if you're noticing, let's say you're in a loop. A loop is like a literally the same tasks in the same order repeatedly. So VU3K, Delivery Tokyo. VU3K, Delivery Tokyo. Until you break that cycle by moving doors, it's not going to break the loop. Okay? Now, essentially, you guys go into these repeat task loops and you usually, for high-level players, you guys usually, if you locate your good doorways right offhand, if you do your rotation perfect, you usually only work about two or three uh, doorways for the whole duration of the contest. Whereas low-level players, it's not that simple. They have to stack up all their upgrades. So they can't really afford to uh, sit at one doorway for a long period of time. They have to have that doorway kind of seal off after so many assignments so that they can stack up all seven upgrades. Playing low level comm is a lot harder than playing high level comm. And the doorway technique is a lot more uh, important for high level players. Okay, now, doorways are something that you guys should pay very close attention to as high level players when making your selection. Same thing with low-level players, but just keep in mind that, you know, you really need to make sure that if you can afford to do your best doorway, then go ahead, but don't camp on a doorway too damn long. I had one guy work one doorway for like 25 assignments. I'm like, dude, even when the opportunity presented itself to shift doorways, because that doorway was good to him, he just kept going with it, even though it would give him some bad assignments here and there. And I'm like, now you really screwed yourself because now you can't even do the streaks. Okay, the next one is downtime. Now, downtime for assignments. So when you make your selection, like we were talking about earlier with the feed and the sugar, think about it before you make your selection on how much downtime it's going to cost you and if you can afford to take it. For example, you guys are in war, okay? Uh, it's your first war. Within the first 20 to 25 assignments, you want to move as quickly as possible. And if you have to do any long factory productions, that's when you would want to do them, within the first 20 to 25 assignments, okay? Now, a lot of you guys uh, don't know when it's a good time to take downtime and when it's not, but always look at how much downtime it's going to take you not only to do the assignment once, but to do it repeatedly if it has to come back multiple times. Like we were talking about with the electrical, okay? So with the electrical, uh, if the person only has a short period of time left, then it would not be advised that they do the electrical before the streaks, as it could come back repeatedly and cause them to fail the streak. Same thing with epic projects. If you are a low-level player, you may hit some downtime uh, between epics that could cause you to fail. So always think about the downtime and how it could screw you over, okay? The next one is algorithm. Algorithm is the amount of times that assignment comes back slash 
uh, the possibilities of that assignment's reoccurring rate. So if something has an extremely high algorithm, that means it's going to keep coming back repeatedly. Monster is something with an extremely high algorithm. It's almost always in the list. So doing it does you no real benefit unless you're opening it up for value possibilities. Or, sorry, uh, value opportunity. So remember earlier when we were talking about value opportunity? So look at algorithm 2500 monster. Why are you doing the monster if it's just going to keep coming back? Why? Because of its value in your list. The more values you have in your list that are high, that are not, that are just sitting there, the less likely you are to get more to come in. So that's the only reason we do the monster at 2000 or higher. Streaks. Okay, so S for streaks. Streaks is another super, super important thing. You guys are going to run, on average, about 2,000 points uh, is what your, your average is going to be before the streaks is what you want to aim for. After the streaks, your average is going to go up significantly. The streaks assignments account for almost half, if not more than half, of your entire week's points. If you can finish all six streaks just with the bonus points alone, that is 48,000 points. Okay, that doesn't include the four assignments in every streak. So you have 24 assignments plus 48,000 bonus points. Even if every single assignment in the streaks is worth 1,000 points, okay, you're getting 24,000 plus 48,000 a lot of damn points all right if you can't finish the streaks that is a big issue now most of the time you don't just get 1000 point assignments in the streaks you get more than that so like i said your streaks are going to be uh, accounting for you know a lot of your points that being said when you're making your your task selection you need to be thinking about how it's going to affect the streaks if it's going to affect it in a negative way, if the odds are working against you, then you should probably hold off. For instance, like I said earlier with the person with the feed and the sugar, she was way too far away from streaks to be worried about the feed or the sugar. Now, normally, like I said, she could have left the feed given that it was only a value of 1300. But in this case, she had no other uh, she had very minimal doorways to work with. So looking into uh, the future a little bit, try to go with what are the odds. Uh, if she only had three doorways that could be utilized and she still had to fit five upgrades, do you really think it's a good idea to leave feed and sugar to sit for the duration of the contest when she had repair, monster, coin, chems, she had all this stuff in her list she couldn't do. Epic. I mean, that, and then if you cross off feed and sugar, uh, yeah, that's not going to happen. So, soon, better to take the, the downtime now rather than closer to the streaks, right? Feed was already prepped, so they're, you know, she can deal with uh, securing the feed before the streaks when she gets closer to that situation. Or, like I said, if her list was in a better position, she had more doorways available to her she could afford to leave it to sit. So always think about how you're gonna make it through the streaks. If you're doing an epic project, think about that. If you're a low level player, what if this assignment comes back repeatedly, because it usually does, and then you hit a downtime, you might fail. Don't want that to happen, okay? Uh, rotating a monster of main task value before the streaks. Absolutely do not do that. Same thing with um, Dozer. Okay, I had a guy last week, he rotated his land expansion before the streaks. Then he got it in the streaks <laughs> after just doing that assignment because it has a high algorithm. And if it hadn't been for me giving him 13 of each, he would have failed. So, I mean, possibly failed. It's not like it's an easy assignment to just complete. And then think about if it was to keep coming back. That would, again, be another major issue. Okay, risk. The risk is one of the main things that you look at anytime you make any selection, okay? 
the very first thing you look at is value, value opportunity, then opportunity. But the next thing, the fourth thing is risk. What bad could come of this? How is this choice going to negatively impact my week? Weighing out the pros and the cons on how how this choice is going to go and how this choice is going to go. If I choose this, this is what I get. This is what I could get. This is the possibility. Um, the opportunity. Blah, blah, blah. The downtime. But then you look at, okay, if I do this, this is the risk. Now, does the risk outweigh the reward? If the risk is too high, then it's not worth doing. Like we were talking about with the electrical before the streaks, is it worth the risk to possibly fail the whole week just to bank in on a 3,000 point electrical task? No, you're giving up an entire streak's worth of points. Possibly, and even more so, and the win for 3,000 points that you could get after doing the streaks if you still have tickets left. It's not worth the risk. Weigh out your risks when you do a 2,500 monster before the streaks. If it goes away and you have to spend hundreds of cash to bring it back in, is it worth the risk? No. Absolutely not. Okay. Reward is the benefit of that specific assignment. So when you do an assignment, that is the reward you get for that assignment. So by doing a 3K VU, you've opened up the possibility of getting another VU assignment, which you did not have while it was sitting there. Uh, reverse rotation is basically when you go long periods of time with assignments that are like below 1500 points. Um, you just keep getting garbage no matter what you rotate, no matter what doorway you choose. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, you just keep getting trashed. That's reverse rotation. It doesn't happen often, but when it does, it usually happens to everybody in your league and is an absolute nightmare. I have reverse rotation videos if you'd like to check them out. I also have a couple of walkthroughs with people in reverse rotation, and I show you guys what they did right or wrong or how we combated the issue and, and all that good stuff. Okay. Uptime and downtime is way different than reverse rotation. There are periods in the uh, Contest of Mayor's Week where you get you know, good tasks, then bad, then good, then bad. Um, it's going to fluctuate usually within a couple of assignments, but sometimes it goes longer than that. Sometimes it's, you know, 10 assignments, and then it starts to pick up again. Uptime and downtime, make a mental note that it is way different than reverse rotation. Again, I do have videos on that where I go into more detail, so be sure to check that out. Uh, average. Now, your average is really, really simple, you guys. It is the amount of points you're getting per task based on your tasks, all of your tasks added up. So you're obviously, if you do a 1,000 point task and a 3,000 point task, that's a total of 4,000 points and two assignments done. That means that you're running a 2,000 point average. So for those two assignments, if you split it up, you got basically 2,000 points per assignment. The way to calculate your average Again, it's pretty simple. All you do is take the number of assignments completed and divide it by the total score that you have. 4,000 points, two assignments. Okay, so you're splitting it in half. So grab your calculator and take your COM score and divide it by total assignments completed. Okay, the next thing is ROR, rules of rotation. Now this is very, very important. Within the first uh, 20, okay, so it's a little different now with than uh, back when the streaks weren't around. So basically the way that it's written is you get 75 assignments in Mega, okay? The first 60 assignments, it's opportunity trumps value. Obviously, value's considered, but like we were talking about earlier, you want to go with what's going to give you the best opportunity. If you have a 1600 um, Paris versus a 1500 or delivery, and definitely if you're a high-level player, you're going to sacrifice those 100 points because of the opportunity of the premium or assignment, the possibility of that assignment coming back worth 3,000 points, and the fact that you, it would yield a better assignment. 
The rules of rotation is that Within the first 60 assignments, opportunity trumps value. The last 15 assignments, value trumps opportunity because you're running out of tasks. There's no reason to make sacrifices that are going to yield better points because you're not going to have very many assignments left. If you have a um, 1,500 monster and everything in your list is below 1,500 points, you're at the very end of the the week, you know, last five assignments or something, last five tickets, why not bank in on the monster? I mean, even if he comes back, by the time he comes back, contest him, I mean, you're going to be done. So now here's the issue with the streaks. With the streaks, because a lot of low-level players want to secure upgrades and factory productions, or high-level players want to secure factory productions, they will take opportunity over value all the way down to basically using up all their tickets because after the streaks are over, they're completely done with the contest. So really what you want to do right before the streaks, if you're, especially if you're a high-level player, is you want to kind of go for value in, in a sense. So for example, the best way I can explain this to you guys, let's say that you are a high-level player and you have plenty of time in the contest remaining, like four days or something. So you, you can afford to do your factory productions. You have more than enough factory slots to do them in one round. In other words, there is no risk here if you get factory productions. Does it suck? Will it take longer to finish your week if you get them? Yes. But is it worth lowering your score over to end up with uh, more time or less points? Okay, so this is kind of a, a unique situation. So, you've got four days left. You don't have electrical or feed or glass secured. Do you continue to lower your score by doing assignments worth a low value that are below main task value to try to secure something that you can afford to do? Absolutely not, okay? So, if I have 20, I'm at 20 assignments remaining, which is when we start thinking about doing the streaks. I get a main war delivery task, and I do it, okay? Then I get garbage. I get like a 1K VU or something. Um, everything in my list is garbage. If I do an assignment within my list, I'm taking a hit against my score that I don't have to take. I can afford to just start the streaks first, right? And then once the streaks are done, I can go back and now do value over opportunity because once the streaks are done, I don't have to worry about risk. I can just do value over op, right? And I can do whatever assignments that I want. Now, in this case, I don't really have a risk with starting the streaks now before I secure the factory productions. All I'm doing is lowering my average and securing something I don't absolutely have to secure. Whereas a low level player, um, without all the factory slots and without anything secured or like an upgrade, that's not advised. I had a guy last week, he didn't have all of his upgrades in his list and he started the streaks. Never do that, not unless you absolutely have to. In that case, the risk outweighs the reward. So he want, you want to make sure you have all seven upgrades in your list or you take it all the way down to nine tasks remaining, allowing you exactly enough tickets to finish the streaks. The only time that you do a streak before um, you have all seven upgrades is if you're trying the technique, which you usually do four assignments before nine assignments, you know, before you're at your end of your rope. And that is a technique that you use. You do a streak assignment, hope to God you don't get it, uh, an upgrade in the, the streaks, and then you continue to rotate your main list, hoping that you have broken that, that cycle and that it puts the upgrade in the main list. Happens a lot. We use it in, in my comm training course quite a bit, um, and it does work a lot of the time. Same thing with factory productions. You know, if you guys have to start streaks, and then <clears throat> let's say you started streaks like two tasks early, um, so let's say like 11 assignments, then you would say, okay, I've got two more tasks I can utilize. You're not getting any factory productions in. Do a couple of the streak assignments and then try to rotate something in and see 
if that had broken the cycle. All right, the order of rotation. Now this is really, really important, especially for high level players. You guys are gonna do your high premium and non-premium, so your main task values, okay? So your main tasks, then you move to your highest premium, then you move to your highest non-premium with lowest algorithm. So or you move to your highest premium with highest algorithm, highest non-premium, lowest algorithm. For high level player or for low level players, it's pretty much the same thing, except for you guys consider factory and shop productions as premium and uh, you don't do upgrades. So you don't, I mean, if you're considering a shop production premium and you have a 1300 paint versus a uh, 1000 VU, then you're gonna do the paint over the VU, especially if you don't have any upgrades in the list because you run a high risk of an upgrade popping up. That's for a low level player. Okay, uh, COM, like we said, that stands for contest of mayors. Then you have T for type of assignment. That is whether it be premium, non-premium, no touch, cancel. So that's something you look at with the, you know, when you make your selection is obviously if it's a premium or non-premium, right? Task assessment, that is where you go through and you label every task with uh, main, rotatable, no touch, cancel. A calm breakdown is where you go through and you label things with main, limited time, um, or yeah, last resort rotatable, rotatable, that kind of thing. Sorry, task assessment is high premium, premium, non-premium. Breakdown is no touch, main, rotatable, limited time, all the things listed down below that we talked about. And that pretty much sums up all the um, terminology that you need to know when you guys play the contest. If there's anything that I missed or you have any questions, put it down in the comment section. Uh, and like I said, any video requests, I'm more than happy to do those. Anytime you guys can share my videos with people in your group or on Reddit or Facebook or whatever, it's much appreciated. I'm trying to get the channel up subscribers this next month because we're almost to 3,000. Uh, and other than that, like I, oh, oh what was I going to say? Oh, the new com, this is the new com guide for high and low level players. This video will be linked underneath this section, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to type up everything for you guys. And it's going to look a little bit different than it does here, but this is definitely uh, the video to watch if you're having trouble is these videos here. Also, you're going to benefit a lot from the walkthroughs, watching each scenario, because a lot of you guys are probably thinking, well, you know, how do I know what to look at? Okay, well, I just told you, you know, but every week is going to be different. Every choice is going to be different. So when you're looking at your, your entire list, every single week, it's going to take practice. And that's why I put up so many walkthroughs for you guys, because every single week is different. The scenarios change and you're just looking at all this stuff and you're just kind of saying, okay, this is my list of good. This is my list of bad. This is what I got going on. This is the what's going to bring me the best outcome uh, or has the highest chance of bringing me the best outcome. Hopefully that made sense. Good luck to you guys this week with the contest. And if you would like me to go through your choices in a video, then I'm more than happy to do that. You just have to submit your Google uh, photo album to me in order, top and bottom screenshots, and try to give me as much information on why you're making the choices you're making in your screenshots. You know, if I need to know that the monster wasn't there, put that in the comments section on there.